Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today I'm going to be restoring a Dinky 131 E-Type Jaguar. This is a 2 plus 2 version. And I, uh, on this project, unfortunately, I ran into a problem and I lost a whole bunch of early clips for the video. So I don't have a turntable, but here's the toy uh, that I examined. Um, so without the turntable, at least we can see in detail what this car looks like. Uh, it's been well played with. These, this model is a later dinky model and I think they were owned at the time by uh, Matchbox Toys. Uh, dinky had gone through some various ownership problems. Uh, and uh, But this model was, I, I always viewed it as kind of a display model, but this one obviously has been played with very, very well and it's been painted by a child. Uh, it's in good shape. It says E-Type Jag 2 plus 2. It doesn't have a number on the base, um, which is okay because you can always look these things up on the internet. Anyway, all the all the parts are there except for the back window and the uh, door panels. And there's windows in the, in the doors. Uh, there were kind of partly open. And inside, it's missing the folding seat backs. So... The normal way I repair these is I drill out the rivets to take the body apart and take all the parts and then I strip them using uh, caustic or caustic soda. And in this case I also did a repair the the uh, the bonnet it doesn't have the it didn't have the hinge uh, bar and so I replaced that and I kind of wish I, could, I, I it was a it was an interesting repair but oh well what are you gonna do? So we'll make do, and uh, so this is after stripping and buffing on the wire wheel. And at this point, I left the engine mounted on there, but I take it off later, you'll see. So there's the base, and all those parts are there. So this is the interior, and needed to do some repair on the hinge support for the tailgate. And here I'm using a little bit of JB Weld, because I wanted it to be very strong because I figured it would be a lot of leverage on it, which is probably why it broke in the first place. Now I've got this new stuff. This is uh, Mr. Hobby White Putty. This stuff dries very fast, so I've got to work, work with it pretty quickly. And on the, on the bonnet, there's a, uh, a space designed for putting the number plate on the front. And this is designed so the factory, they, can, they, they know where to put it. Uh, but it's not really there on the real car, so I wanted to smooth that out instead. So here I've gone to the base and I've taken off the spring because otherwise you can't really take the, the wheels off. You've got to, uh, I wanted to keep the axles intact. So I'm going to hold the spring back in with a single screw so it's offset. So it's holding just on the one corner, but I figured that's going to work. So I've tapped it for 440 and I'm putting one of my 440 screws in there. You can see the spring just to test it out if it's going to hold it. And it does. The, the rivet, the big gigantic rivet that was holding that is still has the edge on it so it doesn't move around. So back to the uh, interior. This JB Weld takes a long time so it took me a couple of days to fix that up. And here I'm standing now, the white putty. I like that white putty. It's pretty good. It's a, it has some unique characteristics. So you got to get used to it, but I'm liking it. So here I'm taking the, uh, some, I'm, I kind of neglect taking off those uh, casting lines. Uh, so on this one, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to look after that as well. I'm doing my best to get this finish perfect. So I'm using here pink primer. Uh, pink primer is uh, you're supposed to use it when you're when you're spraying yellow for some reason, but also when you're spraying red. And I've decided I'm going. There was a red version of this, so I'm at least going with uh, with one of the colors that it came with. Although I'm doing it really as a resto mod. There's other things uh, going to be happening here. So after. After painting, I recommend that you uh, sand off any imperfections. So I'm using uh, I'm using some uh, 
sandpaper to uh, take off the high points. Now the rear window, uh, I've got this is plastic uh, packing material from this year's Christmas cards, but it's really nice. It's a uh, it's nice and flat for this application, which is perfect, and it's very clean. Doesn't have any scratches on it from handling. So here I'm made. I was tr trying to draw the outline, and I just pressed it with my fingers instead. And I'm cutting out a pattern and fitting it to the to the, to the space inside that's designed for the glass that came with the toy. And then I've, I've got the rivet there. Uh, I didn't take it off. Uh, it was already what it was. And it's kind of mushroom shaped. So I've decided I'm going to put a slot in the bottom of the piece of plastic so that the window can be in there uh, without any glue. So here I'm cutting out the slot to the, pad to the paper pattern that I made. So try it out in here, fit it into the mushroom, and Bob's your uncle. It fits just perfectly. So one of the missing parts for this model was the headlights. And so I decided I would uh, design some on the computer and uh, 3D print them. This is an early version. I did a better version later on, which you see in the final one. They're not perfect. It's very hard to make those curves uh, and I spent a lot of time and I think it came out okay. It's, uh, I'm happy with it. Now the other thing I did earlier, I mentioned that I left the engine on the model but I've drilled the rivet out for that one as well because I decided I wanted to keep the shiny chrome. So when I take that off you can see there's a little spring in there and a bunch of crud and that spring is for um, making the hood open so it doesn't just flip open there's a little bit of friction so we're up to the paint stage now and i'm using uh, mr hobby metallic paint and the leveling thinner and the paint comes smoother out of the airbrush and when it dries it dries much more shiny so now off to the spray booth so the bottom, I'm, I'm doing it a little bit different from how Dinky did it. They painted the whole bottom, the, the one gold color, and I'm painting the bottom the way the actual car was. So the back part is painted the body color. So there's the bonnet, and I'm going in there, and uh, first I put on light coats, and at the end I put on a wet coat uh, that stays shiny. So all the parts are getting the same treatment with the same batch of paint, of course, I could make another batch because I didn't mix anything. I'm just using the uh, Mr. Hobby metallic red paint straight out of the jar. So they all get painted. Uh, and it's easier to paint the red over top of the pink primer. But I have to say, it's a, it's, a, it's a deeper red color than you would get if you sprayed this over a white primer. In the end, uh, first I was thinking, oh, it doesn't look quite as bright, but in the end I like it better. It, 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 looks, uh, it, it's, it just looks fancier, it looks classier, and it looks very deep. It's almost, uh, it's almost like it's pearlescent. Now I discovered something um, on the last project, and that is I can use caustic soda without boiling water, just warm water, and it's just like a really strong soap, and that's useful for taking paint off of small parts like this that I don't want to necessarily put them into the boiling water which is what I'm doing with these with these wheels and with the tires I'm able to take the paint off of the tires with the caustic soda just like this in warm in warm water it's actually dissolving the paint which is a cool thing to discover because that's very useful for things like the windows and uh, other plastic parts and rubber parts that you're worried that you'll damage in the caustic soda bath. So time to paint the gold parts of this. Again the leveling thinner goes in here and this is Mr. Hobby metallic gold paint which I love after the last project I did. So I want to use some of it on this project too. So back to the spray booth. So now I get the, re the rest of the bottom, it's going to be a gold color. It's a little golder than the version of paint that uh, Dinky had on there, 
but I but I wanted to paint these uh, wheels, the, the spokes, with the gold color because it looks fancy. It's a, it's a modern thing to have these gold spokes. So, but it, it it looks really good with the red paint. So, I think it's a nice effect. Now again, there's high spots. So I'm using the micro mesh uh, sanding uh, cloth to take off the high points, and then it's going to get a gloss coat. Everything gets a gloss coat. Here we go in the spray booth. And this, of course, looks like it's all happening in, a, in one day, but it's not. It's happening days. Every time I spray paint, I've learned to just leave it at least one day. Sometimes I leave it three or four days just to make sure that it dries. Because if you, if you leave it soft and then you have to handle it, you can leave your fingerprints in the paint. So here I taped the axles. I wouldn't want to take these apart. Now the music you're hearing is On Days Like These by Matt Monroe. I think it's fair use. It's just a short clip. To illustrate an important point is that the Matt Monroe song was used in one of my favorite movies. Which is important for this model because I'm theming the model based on the movie. Uh, it's a Michael Caine movie called The Italian Job. Some people watching, if you're a fan or of that movie, then you'll recognize the music right away. So here I'm putting a white background for the uh, for the. Okay, well in the movie, the, the uh, Jag was actually a coupe, and this is of course a 2 plus 2. In the movie, the Black Jag was the 2 plus 2. But anyway, you get the idea, and when I saw this model, I, I, I remembered the movie, and sorry, I just had to do it. So the clear decal goes over top of the of the plain white one so you get the white letters behind it now to the windshield the windshield is interesting on this one it's very heavily scratched and and i'm using this is even before using my micro mesh uh, fine polishing sandpaper uh, i'm using just ordinary sandpaper because i've got so much material to take off and in fact i decided i'm going to take off the windshield wipers uh, I don't think they add that much to the windshield, but I wouldn't be able to sand it otherwise. So I'm going here, starting with 2400, 3200, 3600, and going through all the different grits, and I'm doing it quickly. And each step of the way, it gets more and more polished. And something's telling me that it'd uh, be a good idea to uh, like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It helps me out with YouTube and uh, also uh, gets more views in general. And it doesn't cost anything. And you won't miss my future videos and I've got some really good ones coming up as well. So there I got it to a point where it looks shiny, like a, almost like a new one. Now the bumpers on the front and back of this one are separate castings and I decided I was going to polish them so I just used the metal polish and I polished them by hand with q-tip and paper towels. And here I'm detailing the tail lights and I looked up what the colors are so I've got them, I've got them uh, historically correct. I'm using my tiniest, tiniest detailing brush on these as well. So the rear number plate gets the same treatment as the front one. After the white one dries, then I can put the clear one on top of it that has the black 
and then the white shows through the clear numbers. Now these are the these are the marker lamps or possibly indicators not sure exactly but I looked it up online uh, how they're done for for the this is for the front and part of it is orange uh, so it's like an it could be an indicator it could be a marker lamp and then the other part is it has a clear lens so I paint that white so it's uh, half and half on this thing but it's not half and half it's it's kind of a two-thirds design so I'm trying to get that accurate that's ah, just a stupid detail but you know I think it makes it look more realistic when you go to those kind of little details so this is for the front the front has broken in two pieces when it came out of the model so I'm doing the two separate and uh, you won't see the break on the final one because the break is in a part that's completely hidden uh, which you'll see So this is a very nice model. I like these castings because the indicator lights are actually right on top of the bumper like that. So it really, it's really working well. So now we're going back to the interior. This is the dashboard and it's mostly black. So uh, I'm painting it with the uh, uh, satin black spray paint from the rattle can. And I've, I've, I've uh, masked, masked off a center portion that's going to be silver. And here, put one two three drops in that's not the color I want this is the interior color I'm going for a leather look a light leather that I've I looked at pictures online and I found uh, yeah I needed to put a little white in there too uh, there's a it, I, I was looking for the right mix of, of colors and I got it with only three colors again the leveling thinner goes in and mix it up and into the airbrush. Now we go back to the spray booth and this is the main seats. And they get painted yellow. Now here's a part again that I 3D printed the door panels, interior door panels and the seat backs. These are the folding seats so that you can get into the back seats of the 2 plus 2. Those, of course, were broken off of the original one. And here you can see this is that rubbery uh, masking material. And in the end, I'm using this silver paint from Vallejo and I'm just brushing it on. But it's very thick paint. It goes right over the black anyway, so I really didn't need to do all that masking. So I'm using the same paint, painting the, uh, con the console in the middle. Just a little bit of detailing in there. And then these uh, door panels. That's uh, interesting. I'm painting the, the silver and then I go in and I paint uh, brown on the handles where you pull the door shut with. And you see it's all going well here. I put a nice uh, accent at the top of the door panel when it comes to the window. I think it looks nice. And then I go with the seats. These are seat backs. These are all done. I did on the 3D printer. Here I'm painting the lines on the back with the silver. I went a little bit over and I, I fixed that up later. So these came out in the end pretty good. And in the back they've molded in a suitcase or a briefcase or something. So I'm going to paint it like a suitcase or briefcase. So there's all kinds of detail on the dashboard. This is actually matching the dashboard on a Jaguar, but silver and white, there's not a lot of contrast. It's way too small to start painting little uh, needles pointing on those uh, gauges. So I just did a bit of minimal work. And here I'm painting that suitcase in the back. I've seen other people do it. it uh, it winds up looking pretty cool. So here I'm back in the door panels and what happens is I start doing this and then I get mixed up whether the whether the camera is on record or on standby so I wound up painting the handles on those uh, window uh, winders uh, when the camera was on pause. So that happens once in a while. So this is the original steering wheel. I was thinking I would print one with the fancy holes in it and everything. And I'm thinking nobody can see inside this thing anyway, so I'm just gonna keep it minimum. There's my workbench in the middle of the project. 
So here's the engine. I've cleaned the paint off of it and polished it up. And now I'm painting some details on it. And I think it looks really cool when all these details are painted and there's a few different colors. And it makes it look really interesting. I don't know what all these parts are, but I figured those ones needed to be yellow. So this is the emblem that's on the uh, front grille of the E-Type Jaguar. It's the Jaguar inside the uh, red uh, sunburst pattern. So I filed that thing down so I can try and get a round red circle onto that part of the front grille. And I had a little more trouble than I, than I was hoping for, but eventually it uh, came out all right. And then my Jaguar head in silver, there, it looks exactly like a Jaguar. So here's another 3D, tiny 3D printed part. This is the base for the, uh, the radio antenna. And I've got a little piece of copper wire that goes inside it, the, the 3D printed base. And it worked out first try. And so I'm making the thing silver. And then I paint that base black afterwards anyway, because I thought it's going to look better. So here's the latest set of uh, headlights. This is the, these are the final versions. I did four of them. I always do extra ones in case you screw something up. So I'm putting some clear coat on those so they look clear. And now we start the reassembly. First to put the wheels onto the base. So my system works perfectly. So now I've got the interior parts these are the door panels. So I'm going to use epoxy, five minute epoxy to glue them back on. So I'm showing everything here. And I've got some people uh, have been commenting they would like to see. Uh, what I did before, I always showed every single detail. Uh, this one, I, I showed some details. I didn't show all of them. Um, and the next one, I, I was in the middle of it before I got these messages so I wasn't recording everything as well but afterwards I think I'm gonna go back to showing every little detail because people seem to like that so there the spring goes in the engine goes on and I tapped and threaded that one so that gets uh, rigidly attached which is important because that spring has to have some friction against the uh, bar uh, that the bonnet hinges on so you can see here it's two, part, two parts because it broke, which makes it easier to put together. It's actually a good thing. You can see here uh, where it where it uh, has broken is in a place where it's invisible. So I just put a little bit of that epoxy on there, push it in place, and it's right back perfectly normal. So here I'm putting the dashboard on, which was ill-advised, uh, which you'll see in a minute. And then I pop my my tilting seat backs in there. I figured out the system, how they how they work. Now I put my window into the fully painted hatchback. And now to put it back together, I've got to put the parts in place and then I have to kind of tape them and, and hold them in place in order to put the whole thing together because you've, otherwise I don't have enough hands to hold all these parts together. So I'm using this, this is the, the tape for, uh, for painting because it peels off well and doesn't uh, tend to take the paint with it. So here I'm getting ready to put the base on, but first the interior is going to have to go in. And I'm finding that you can't get that dashboard past the door hinges. So this is not going to work. And also I forgot to put the windshield in. So back to the beginning and put the windshield in first. And I put that in with a little bit of epoxy. And you can see, look at how I had to maneuver that dashboard in place. And then it has a little pin that it sits on. And now I've got to push this, uh, the interior onto that dashboard and it fits into a little notch and it has to snap in place. It's quite a tricky, operation to put this thing back together again. There I'm putting, get, trying to get it into the right space and it's driving me crazy here. 
and then I think I just push on it a little bit harder until it snaps into place onto that onto that dashboard and there it is so next goes on the rear bumper and then it's ready for the base and that's tricky too because I've got to line up the holes with the pins on the door hinges so it's a kind of a finesse thing to get it right and then you know when it's right because then it pops right into place and you know okay that's everything's in the right spot so that's the bodywork all put together and take off those little construction tapes and now we go to more assembly. Now there's these details that come on these later models. I've, I'm not used to doing these kind of details because the old models from the from the 40s and 50s and eh, they didn't have these kind of details. This one's loaded with them. It's got the antenna, it's got these uh, hood or bonnet mounted headlights or sorry mirrors and here are the, uh, the headlights the final version that I came up with Maybe I could have made them better, but man, I ran out of time because it's so time consuming trying to get those curves and everything exactly right. So now I paint on some door handles. And then there's these little pips on the front. I think those are actually uh, windshield wiper pins where the windshield wipers match up. So instead of the turntable, here's where we started as a reminder. Let's see what it looks like now. Well, I think it's a fantastic looking model. It's perhaps my favorite one so far. It just, it looks gorgeous. So many bits of bling on it. It's got the, uh, it's got the uh, Italian job theme. And I think those uh, gold spokes work out really really well and all the parts open and work perfectly so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Deal de detailing and the next episode is going to have another beautiful car uh, and it's a basket case as well and this one came out surprisingly good because actually the casting was in good shape so until next time be seeing you.